Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our last unit of the year. Normal calculations. Here we go. So what is the average or mean shoe size of all male students at Columbia Heights High School? Here are the shoe sizes of a sample of male students from Columbia Heights High School. So the first thing is determine the mean and standard deviation of the data. So we need to type this into our calculator. Go to your list, stat edit. Clear out any numbers that are in there. All right, here we go. So we're going to type them in. 10, and they can be typed in in any order. 13.5, 7, 11, 7.5, 12, 6.5, 10, 7, 12, 9.5, 13, 10, 12.5, 11.5, and 8. All right, so we've got our sample into our list. Now, to find the mean and standard deviation, remember we hit stat, we go to calculate, we pick number 1. We're going to need to hit enter three times. All right. So we are going to round our answer here. So the mean is a little over 10. So, but we're just gonna use 10. So our mean, we're just gonna use 10. Our standard deviation, the S is 2.3. Now to make life a little bit easier, we're gonna just round that to two. All right, B, draw a normal curve, put the mean on the x-axis, and then put the numbers for three standard deviations above and below the mean. All right, here we go. So we're gonna draw our normal curve. The mean goes in the middle, that's 10. We're gonna go three up and three down. Okay, we're gonna use two for our standard deviation, so that means we're gonna add two each time we go up. And then we're gonna subtract the standard deviation, the two, each one we go down. All right. Now, from our sample data, 68% of the male students at Columbia Heights High School have a shoe size from what to what? All right, so remember 68% is one below to one above, so that means a shoe size of eight to 12. Letter D from our sample, 95% of the male students at Columbia Heights High School have a shoe size from what to what? Well, if you remember, 95% is two below to two above. So from size six to 14. All right. Moving on to the next page. The distribution of heights of women age 60 to 69 is approximately normal with a mean of 62 inches and a standard deviation of 3 inches. Draw a normal curve, put the mean on the x-axis, then put the number for 3 standard deviations above and below. All right, the mean is 62. Again, we go three up and three down. Okay, I'm gonna redraw that one. Now, the standard deviation is three, so I'm gonna add three going up. And 
And I'm going to subtract 3 going down. All right, so 68% of women aged 18. Okay, wrong age. Let's, let's change this age up here to say 18 to 24. Okay, that's a little bit better. Let's go with that age. So 68% of women aged 18 to 24 is approximately, again, 68% is one below to one above. So that would be 59 to 68 inches tall. 95% of women aged 18 to 24. All right, again, that's going to be two below to two above. So that's going to be 56 inches to 68 inches tall. All right, let's move on. Number three. For a given population of high school basketball teams in Minnesota, the average number of points scored in a game is 66 with a standard deviation of eight points. What is the Z-score for a basketball team that scores? Okay, remember the Z-score is X bar minus mu, which is the mean, divided by the standard deviation. So remember the question is always the X bar. So that means the mu, this is the mu, 66, and this is the standard deviation. So here we go. So we say z equals 70 minus 66 divided by 8. I will demonstrate this one time with the calculator. All right, make sure you use parentheses. So the z-score is 0.5. All right, let's just go ahead and do the others real quick. All right, that's all you need to do on that. Use your calculator to help. Make sure you plug the numbers into the right spot. Okay, the next one, same thing, except the scenario has changed. In this problem, we have high school hockey and the average number of points scored in a game is two with a standard deviation of a point five. All right, so remember. Okay, this is our mu, our mean, and this is our standard deviation. Remember the question, again, is always the X bar. All right, here we go. Okay, we do want to use the decimal this time. Let me demonstrate once. So we've got parentheses 0 minus 2 divided by, whoops, let me fix that. Point 0.5. So the z-score on that is negative 4. All right, let's continue with the rest.
All right, so those are the z-scores for that problem. All right, let's go to the next part. So here we're going to go ahead and sketch the normal curve. We're going to mark the z-score, shade the area under the curve, use the calculator to find the area under the shaded part of the curve. All right, this is going to be a little bit more work. So here we go. First thing is we draw a picture. All right, 1.75, I'm going to say is right about here. And it says less than. So I am going to shade to the left. Now I'm going to use an abrupt for normal. Actually, let me write this up here. Okay, I'm going to use an abbreviation for the normal CDF. I'm just going to write NCDF. All right, so to find this one, I'm going to go normal CDF. Since I shaded to the left, I'm going to use negative 100, comma, 1.75. And then that's going to give me the decimal answer of how much that curve is shaded. So just a reminder. To find the normal CDF, remember, we're going to go second VARS, and it's number two. Okay, number two. Our lower limit is the negative 100. Our upper limit is the 1.75. Just hit enter and you get our answer. So we're going to round it to 0.96. All right, let's do number six. So we're going to draw the curve. Mark three up, mark three down. All right. I'm going to approximate the, ne the negative 0.85. I'm going to say that's right about here. And again, it's less than, which means shade to the left. So once again, I'm going to be using negative 100 as my lower bound. So here we go. All right, so let me demonstrate this again. Number two, again, negative 100, except my lower bound this time is negative 0.85. Hit enter until you get the answer, and we're going to round that to 0.20. All right, number seven. I'm going to mark the negative 1.65. Negative 1.65 is, we're going to say that's right about there. But this time it says greater than. So that means I'm going to shade to the right. Since I'm shading to the right, that means I'm going to use positive 100 as my maximum. So 
So I'm going to do the normal CDF, negative 1.65 comma 100. Okay, I'll demonstrate that one. So again, I'm going to go to second VARS, number two. Now my lower limit here is the negative 1.65, and my upper limit is the 100. Oops, wrong one, okay. Let me do that again. Negative 1.65, 100. And there we go, so 0 0.95. Okay, so 0 0.95 of that normal curve is shaded. All right, next one. Okay, so the 2.25 is the lower limit because we shaded to the right. Okay, I'm not going to show that one typing it in, but practice it. You should get 0 0.01. Okay, number 9. This time we have two Z scores. So we're going to mark both of them. Negative 1.45 is like right here. 2.05 we're going to say is right there. Shade in between. So when we do this one, my lower limit is the negative 1.45. And the upper limit is the So you should get 0.91. Okay, last one on this. Here we go. you should end up with 0.95. All right, let's move to the next page, putting it all together. So here, we're going to put it all together. We're gonna to do word problems and all the stuff we just did, we're gonna make it all come into one nice group here. So we're going to find the z-score, we're going to draw, mark, and shade the normal curve, and then answer the question being asked. All right, so a new musical, sorry, a new muscle relax, relaxant is available. Researchers of the firm developed the relaxant have done studies that indicate that the time lapse between administer, administration of the drug and being effective of the dr drug is normally distributed with a mean of 38 minutes and a standard deviation of five minutes. 
So A, the drug is administered to a patient selected at random. What is the probability that the time it takes to go into effect is 35 minutes or less? Okay, that's my X bar. So this is my mu, this is my standard deviation. So remember, that's our formula. So let's start way over here on the left. Here we go, so Z equals we take 35 minus 38 divided by, uh, what is it, 5. Okay, we're going to find that z-score. And we find that that is negative 0.6. Draw the normal curve. Now, negative 0.6 is right, we're going to say right about here. Now, or less. So we're going to shade to the left. So that means our lower bound is negative 100. Okay, so step two is done. Step three. We'll type that in and we're going to get a decimal of 0.6. So what is the probability that the time it takes to go into effect is 35 minutes or less? Okay, the probability is 0.27. B. What's the probability that the average time before it's effective for the patient is 20 minutes or longer? All right, here we go. Okay, we type that in and we end up with a Z score of negative 3.6. All right, draw the picture. Now, negative 3.6, that thing's way down here. And it says, uh, 20 minutes or longer, so longer means shade to the right. So normal CDF, okay, my lower bound is negative 3.6 and my upper bound is the 100. And I'm going to get this 0.9998. So basically, the probability is 1. All right, letter C. What is the probability that it is between 20 and 30 minutes? Or 35 minutes? Okay, well, we've already found for 20 minutes and for 35 minutes. If you look up above, we've already found the z-score for 35 minutes is negative 0.6. And the z-score for 20 minutes is negative 3.6. So we just need to go right to the picture. I'm gonna mark those two spots. But now this, we're shading in between. So this is the negative 3.6, this is the negative 0.6. So that means my normal CDF 
is going to be my lower bound is the negative 3.6 my upper bound is the negative 0.6 and I'm going to get 0.27 so the probability is Point two seven. Okay, let's do another one like number 11. Let's look at number 12. Fire department response time is the length of time it takes a fire truck to arrive at the scene of a fire started from the time the call was given to the truck. Response time from the Castlewood Fire Department follows a mound-shaped and symmetric distribution. The response time has mean nine minutes with a standard deviation of two minutes. So this is my mu, this is my s. What is the probability that it will take less than six minutes for the fire truck to arrive? That's my x bar. All right, here we go. Z equals six minus nine divided by two. And we get negative 1.5. All right, so I'm going to mark it. Negative 1.5, I'm going to say is right here. And it says less than, so I'm going to shade to the left, which means I'm going to use negative 100 for my minimum. Okay, type that into the calculator and I get 0 0.07. So the probability is 0 All right, let's turn the page. What is the probability that it will take the truck more than 13 minutes? All right, so here we go. So our Z score for this is a two. Okay, so that will be right here. And it says more than, shade to the right. So our maximum will be 100. And we end up with 0 0.02. All right, one more from this, and then we got the, we have to do the go backwards problem. So this one, between seven minutes and 11 minutes. So we're gonna have to find both of those Z scores. So we end up with negative one and one. Now you should already have this one memorized. Between negative one and one is 0.68 or 68%. But if you really need to, you can do the normal CDF. So the probability that they arrive between 7 and 11 minutes is 0.68.
All right, one more problem. Going backwards. For a given population of high school basketball teams in Minnesota, the average number of points scored in a game is 68, with a standard deviation of seven points. All right, this is a go backwards problem. Remember, you have to use inverse norm. First, we have to start with the picture, though. Now, in this picture, we have to look at, so A asks, if your team always scores in the top 25%, well, the top 25% is going to be on the right side. So we're just going to, we're just going to estimate, we're just going to say, okay, right here, okay, this is about 25%. Now remember, you got to change that, well, we don't need to change this one to a decimal, okay? If you remember what I said, the calculator is dumb. The calculator only knows how to go to the left of that spot. So what's to the left? 75% is to the left. And the decimal for that is 0.75, okay? That's the only one we need to change to a decimal. So we need to find our z-score. So to find the z-score, we use inverse norm. And we put in the 0.75. Okay, we, so let me demonstrate. So we go to our calculator. We got to go second vars. It's number three. So it says the area is 0.75. And voila, there is our z-score, 0.67. Now, Remember our formula. So this is our Z. So we're going to go 0 0.67 equals. Remember, it's the X bar that we're trying to find. Okay, that's our X bar that we're trying to find. The mean, it says, is right here. That's our mu. 68. Our standard deviation is 7. Now, remember the little path I told you to, to follow. You're going to do this little loop. You're going to go backwards, meaning you're going to multiply these two numbers and you're going to add the 68. So the x is going to equal the 0.67 times 7 plus 68. And we find out that that is 72.69. Okay, let me show you with the calculator. So all we needed to do was go 0 0.67 times 7 plus 68. Now you can't have part of a basket. So we're gonna round it to 73. So the answer is 73 or more points. So a team that scores in the top 25% is always scoring 73 or more points. Okay, letter B, last one. If your team always scores in the bottom 10%, well, that's not good. You're probably not going to win very many games. So the bottom 10%, well, that's going to be down here. So 10% is going to be like this spot. Now, remember, we have to use the decimal. So the decimal for that is 0.10. Okay, because again, the calculator will only use what's to the left, and that is the 10%. So here we go. So the Z 
we find by using the inverse norm. I'll demonstrate that one more time. Second vars, number three, the area is 0 0.10, and it's negative 1.28. All right, so looking at our formula again, we're going to plug the numbers in. Here we go. So we're going to go negative 1.28 equals x bar. That's this. Minus 68 divided by 7. Follow the little loop. x bar equals negative 1.28 times 7 plus 68. So if your team scores in the bottom 10%, that means they only score about 59.04. While we'll round that, we'll just say 59 points or less. All right, congratulations, ladies and gentlemen. That is the last unit study guide for this school year. We will have a final exam yet, and we will work on that after we're done with this test. All right, good luck.